Hello, I'm Wayne with ModularHydro.com. Today we're going to talk about how to install an automatic shutoff valve, and we're also going to explain when you want to use this valve. Basically, if your reverse osmosis system does not come with an automatic shutoff valve, you will install an automatic shutoff valve if you're going to use, let's say, an automatic float in your reservoir and you want that to shut off, then you want to shut the water off going into your RO system. The other case that you would use it may be because you're hooking it up under your sink and you're going to use a reverse osmosis faucet. So let's go ahead and dive right into this and show you how this is installed. Now if we take a close-up look at our automatic shutoff valve, you're going to see the valve is divided in two. One side is the high side. Now that's going to be where you see the in and the out. It's going to be printed on that side of the valve. The other side of the valve is going to be your low side. So depending on what type of valve you are connecting up, the in and the out is the high side. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by locating our outside on our carbon or sediment type filters. Now these may be two or three stages down here, so you want to make sure you get the outside, and it's usually printed out. The inside is going to be where the water comes in from your municipality, your garden hose, etc. That's going to be water coming into your carbon sediment filters, and then you want to find the outside, which is this side. So what we're going to do is we're going to show you how to install this valve so it's nice, neat, and clean. Now the first thing we want to do is we want to connect up our exhaust from the system. In other words, our wastewater with your flow restrictor. So you want to go ahead and plug that in. And how you know which one of these two is the outside that goes through your flow restrictor is if you look at them closely, the one that protrudes out the furthest from the membrane housing is going to always be your clean water. The other one down below, and depending on your system, this may be flip-flopped. What I recommend doing is pulling the membrane off and have these two fittings on the same side as the outfitting on your carbon filter. This way you're not running lines all over the place. You can sneak your valve in here and it'll be a nice, neat, clean job when you're done. So we're going to go ahead and plug in our flow restrictor and that's in. Now remember the flow restrictor is going to go to, to our drain or it's going to go to uh, an area where the wastewater can go. So Locate the in and the out. The in is going to be here and we want to come from our outside of our canister to the in and plug that in. Now I want this on the bottom and the reason why I want to do this is because I want my valve to sit nice and neat behind the membrane housing and in between my mounting brackets so you don't see all these lines running all over. It just makes for a nice clean job. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take the opposite side of the valve and we're going to go from our reverse osmosis clean water out which is here and we're going to cut a line just long enough to connect these two up. Then we're going to plug that into the low side of the valve. So we've got these two sides, high pressure and low pressure, coming out of our membrane, which is our clean water. Then we're going to go ahead and we're going to connect up our high pressure side, and that's going to go directly into our membrane. So we want to cut a piece of hosing to go from our inlet side of the membrane. This is where the water comes into the membrane and then comes out on this side. So we want to connect that up to the high side like this. Okay, so this valve is tucked in nice and neat behind the bracket. Then we can go ahead and take our clean water line coming out of the valve. Remember, this is the low side. And I've got these color coded because with our systems, we use white, we use black, and we use blue. Blue is our, always our clean reverse osmosis water coming out of the valve. Now, from, from this side, once you have your clean water coming out, you're going to connect this up to either your reservoir automatic float valve, or you can connect up to, let's say, your kitchen sink, wherever you want this clean water to go. Now, there's one thing I did not talk about. You may want to put what we call a uh, backflow prevention valve or a check valve in. This one already has one on the outgoing the clean water coming out of the membrane. If you do not have one, you want to install one. They, they can either be in line 
or they can be built into the fitting and then screwed right into here. And what that does is that prevents water from backing in to the membrane if your kitchen sink clogs up. If you are using, let's say, a float valve and a reservoir, there's really no need to put this check valve or backflow prevention valve in because there's no way that water is going to go from that reservoir tank unless it's pressurized, like under your sink, then you would want it. But if it's just going into a reservoir for hydroponic use, you really don't need this valve. Now that you have this all installed, as you can see, it's nice and neat. You're going to go ahead and connect up your drain line, which is going to come out of your flow restrictor. And of course, we use black lines. Okay, so let's go ahead and recap and take a close-up look how this is installed. Remember, your valve has a high side and a low side. Your high side is going to come out of your carbon filters and it's going to go to the in side of that valve. The side that says out is going to go directly to the inside of the membrane and that's with the single fitting and this large screw off cap. That's feeding water into the membrane, goes through the membrane and it comes out two ways. You've got clean water coming out which is going to be on the low side of the valve and then you continue your clean water out it's going to go to your float valve, to your faucet. Now what happens is it's going to recognize the pressure difference. So when you shut your faucet off or your reservoir completely fills, pressure is going to build up on this line inside this valve. And what it's going to do is there's a piston and a diaphragm in there. It's going to recognize that pressure difference. It's going to push down on that diaphragm and it's going to shut this side of the valve off. So water will not continue to go through your membrane and it will also automatically shut off your wastewater coming out. So now that we've taken a close-up look and you see how this is connected, there's really not a whole lot to it. At this point you can go ahead and install your reverse osmosis system and you're ready to go. For more informative videos such as this, or to purchase this valve or other parts to your reverse osmosis system, go to modularhydro.com. You can also print off all kinds of different information instructional type sheets that you can have with you while you're installing your valve, your faucet, your float valve, etc. Again, I'm Wayne with modularhydro.com. Thank you.